Malaysia cannot book the ticket, we have to book the ticket only from so. That's the only thing. So booking also not confirmed over there. You have to go there and only book. No. The first one. Can book online? Uh, yeah, but I don't know what is the portal, which, which line to book. So. Anyway, I'll find out when I go I, to Yeah, when I have, anyway, I thought of doing just to find out what you can able to do. You want train or, mm -hmm. or we have to go on the common train and uh, book the uh, ticket in, uh, sorry, book, get, get the coach in Anya or something like that. Yeah, all the coach, mostly the coaches start from Hachiai, but there used to be one coach which would come from Malaysia. Yeah, yeah, that's right, but that's no more. Really. Not no more, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the best thing is the flight is the best option. Yeah, yeah. Double to flight. Double to flight. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Jasamati Nandana Prajabara Nagara Kokula Nandana Pana Samati Nandana Praja Paranagara Kokula Nandana Pana Gopi Paranagara Madana Mano
Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksura Militangena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rukyascha Kripa Sindhu Payevacha Padita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Sinamene Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschachate Satadine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we were going through the second canto and we began first chapter describing the first steps in self-realization. Sukadeva Goswami was presenting to Maharaj Parikshit how one could contemplate the Supreme by looking at the universe and contemplating the universal form of the Lord. So. After explaining that, then Sukadeva Goswami goes on in the second chapter, we hear about the Lord in the heart and Sukadeva Goswami is bringing the, his uh, presentation to Maharaj Parikshit, he's bringing it to a step higher from the platform of the universal form and seeing the universe is divine, he's explaining now about the super soul, contemplating the Lord in the heart. 
But before he does that, if you study the second chapter of the second canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, Sukadeva Goswami speaks very strongly, very powerfully about understanding how one should completely depend on the Lord for everything. That there's nothing we can do without the grace of the Supreme Lord. And Sukadeva Goswami gives different examples. He, he says that you can get water from the rivers. You can drink the water from the river. And you can get fruits from the trees. There's many things just growing wild, the gifts of nature. You don't have to be so concerned with accumulating material assets for your bodily comfort. Everything is provided by nature. Suk Sukadeva Goswami is speaking strongly to Maharaj Parikshit because Maharaj Parikshit had come from the royal family and he had given up everything to come and sit with Sukadeva Goswami to prepare himself for the final days of his life. So Sukadeva Goswami wants Maharaj Parikshit to fully surrender and not to have any feelings of regret or feelings of uh, any kind of material need. You know, sometimes people say, well, I could be a devotee, but I need this. You know, you know, we, we have our conditions, you know, which we put on our devotional service. But Sukadeva Goswami wants Maharaj Parikshit to fully let go of all material desires and material attachments. And he talks about getting the fruit from the trees and drinking the water from the river. And then he said, are there no torn clothes lying in this, on the road? You just take torn clothes and you can use that to cover your body. You don't need to worry about going to the stores and getting the latest fashions and so on. You know, as, as we think, you know, I, I need this, I need that. But Sukadeva Goswami is telling Maharaj Parikshit, who, who's a king, who'd been the ruler of the, the, practically the entire world, and there's Sukadeva Goswami saying, are there no torn clothes on the road to cover your body? <laughs> it's quite a contrast, you know, to come from the level of being the ruler of the planet and now you have to pick up clothes from the, the, the ground and use it to cover your body. This is the kind of renunciation Sukadeva Goswami was imploring. And if you read the Chaitanya Charitamrita, I hope you all read Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's a description about Raghunath Das Goswami. Of course, Raghunath Das Goswami he, had, he was also coming from a very wealthy family. His family were very, very rich. His father and his uncle were maintaining all of the brahmanas in Bengal. He was giving them all kinds of... He was providing for their maintenance. So Raghunath was very, very wealthy. But he gave it all up and he left everything. He ran away from his home with great difficulty. He ran away many times. They usually get caught. But after getting the mercy from Lord Nityananda at Panihati, after that, then Lord Nityananda, uh, then Raghunath waited for the appropriate time and he made his escape and they never caught him and he never went back home again. So he came to live in Jagannath Puri. And while he was in Jagannath Puri, he put a request to Lord Chaitanya. He didn't put his request directly to Lord Chaitanya. He was given to Swarup Damodar, who was like 
the secretary of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Raghunath was under the care of Swarup Damodar. So Raghunath asked Swarup Damodar one day, he said, I would like to know what are the Lord's instructions for me. Does he have any particular instructions? So the message came back from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's given in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Do not hear what the common people have to say and don't talk like any of the common people. Do not wear luxurious clothes and do not eat opulent foodstuffs. Constantly chant the holy names of the Lord and worship the Lord in your heart. So these were the instructions and these instructions are quoted there by Prabhupada in Upadesh Amrita. Right? You've all read Upadesh Amrita. In the very first verse, purport, Prabhupada is talking about Rupa, Rupa Goswami was telling about Vachovegam, Manasakrodavegam, controlling the urge to speak, the mind's demands, and the actions of anger, and these, the urges of the tongue and the belly, the genital, these things have to be, all the Vegas. These have to be controlled. So in that purport, Prabhupada quotes that incident, how Lord Chaitanya gave instruction to Raghunath Das Goswami that don't talk like ordinary people, don't even hear what they have to say, and don't eat opulent foodstuff, don't dress luxuriously. Because Raghunath had come to Jagannath Puri to renounce material life, to totally renounce material life. Obviously, you know, you, we cannot imitate that kind of behavior. We have, many of you have jobs and you have responsibilities and duties to perform. You're, we're not on that level, we're not ready for that. But. That was the instruction which Lord Chaitanya gave to Raghunath Das Goswami. And similarly, Sukadeva Goswami is giving instructions to Maharaj Parikshit. Because Maharaj Parikshit has only a few days left to live. So he has to prepare himself. He has to totally detach from everything material. Just like sannyasi. Sannyasi means a walking dead man, a dead person. Why? Because they have no material responsibility. So sannyasis, they will wear cloth and they, they have to wear cloth appropriate for the preaching, to meet people, to be, if, if we will be of a different mood, then it, it will be harder to present Krishna consciousness. If we, you know, if we're wearing torn clothes and, <laughs> you know, it, it would be very difficult to impress people about Krishna consciousness. But you do get people like that, you know, you get these uh, Nagababas or the followers of Lord Shiva, they cover their bodies in ashes and they have the big beard and the long hair and they just wear a little long loin cloth. So it, it's these, these uh, kind of people are there and you get them not only in India, you get them in Western countries as well. In America you can find them like that. Of course they're not trying to, usually they don't preach, that's not their program, but they do display that degree, extreme degree of renunciation and detachment from the material. So Sukadeva Goswami is encouraging Maharaj Parikshit, you know, don't worry about 
food or water. Don't worry about clothing. And if even you're going to lay down to sleep, you can lay on the ground. The ground's flat. You can lay on the and you, you want something for your, you want a pillow? Use your arm. You have arms, you use your arm for a pillow. You don't need all of these kind of luxury. I, and Sukadeva Goswami is saying, that, that many things are not necessary. We're thinking, oh, I need this, I need that. But Sukadeva Goswami wants Maharaj Pariksit to just fully let go all kinds of attachment, uh, identification with the material body, and just fully immerse himself in the topics of Lord Krishna. And then Sukadeva Goswami then goes on to speak about meditation on the super soul. You're going to meditate on the super soul, you can't be meditating about what will I have for breakfast? What will I eat for lunch? Or where, what time will I'm going to? Where am I going to sleep tonight? And like this, you know. This meditation on the super soul is to fully absorb the mind in contemplating the super soul. We have to let go of the material. This is Srimad Bhagavatam, serious subject matter. Preparing someone for death, very serious business. So Sukadeva Goswami says here, others conceive of the personality of Godhead residing within the body in the region of the heart and measuring only eight inches with four hands carrying a lotus, a wheel of a chuck, a wheel of a chariot, a conch shell, and a club, respectively. And then Sukadeva Goswami goes on to describe more features about the super soul. I think most of you will also be familiar with the features of the super soul, how he is covered in the yellow colored cloth, and how Actually, the yellow color, even in uh, other oriental countries, the yellow cloth was very significant. It indicated the king. Only the king could wear yellow. If you go to China, and Vietnam, and these places, it, the yellow cloth is only for the, the supreme person, the topmost person. So the super soul was decorated in yellow cloth. And then around his neck, he has a very special ornament, right? What's the name of that ornament? The Kustuba gem, right? Kustuba gem. It's a form, a beautiful locket around his neck with the cow on it. Lord Krishna is very attached to cows. And he wears this Kustuba gem around his neck. And then he has also a beautiful garland of lotus flowers around his neck. And when the yogis will meditate on the super soul, they will contemplate the Lord from the different limbs. You can read a detailed description of the meditation on the different limbs of the body of the Lord. It's given in the third canto, uh, uh, chapter 28, where Kapila Muni is describing Astanga Yoga to Mother Devahuti. And he's telling his mother how to meditate on the super soul. And you begin from the lotus feet and think about the different markings on the soles of the feet of the Lord. There are different ornamental markings on the soles of the Lord's feet. And then the beauty of the Lord's nails. And then the, the thigh of the Lord, which is sitting on the shoulders of Garuda. 
and how the Lord is covered with a girdle and the beautiful yellow cloth, silk yellow cloth covering his thighs. <laughs> the description goes on up the different bodily limbs. So in the beginning, the contemplation is more overall, but then as you become more detailed, you begin to focus on the different limbs, one after another, and you progress upwards, upwards, coming up to the lotus face of the Lord and seeing the beautiful smile of the Lord. So in this way the yogi contemplates the super soul. So this kind of meditation, this was done in the Satya Yuga. You can read about people like Kardama Muni, how he meditated. So then Sukadeva Goswami goes on to describe, because he's introduced the topic of meditation, then he goes on to describe about how different yogis will be liberated from the material body. This is the object of meditation, that you, the soul will go out of the body and you can be liberated to the spiritual world. So the second chapter describes two different situations. One is for the pure devotee and he goes directly back to the spiritual world. He gives up, you can see the yogi there, you know, he has no material desire. And no material desire means he doesn't even want to go to any of the planets, any of the higher planets in the universe, like Topoloka or Maharloka, or Satya Loka. He doesn't want to go to Swarg and he doesn't want any of the yoga cities. He just simply wants to go back to Godhead. His desire is to go to join with the Supreme Lord and engage in his service. So this kind of yogi is described first of all. He's a, a fully detached yogi. And he can just go out as described here. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, our Acharya, he explains that this is the process followed by the Bhakti Mishra Yogi, who have no interest in seeing higher planets, even up to Brahmaloka. That's quite a challenge not to have an interest, to want to see the higher planets. Just like, you know, when, when you go traveling, you like to go and see, oh, I want to see this place, I want to go there. You know, you go, even we go to India, we want to, we go to Mayapur, I want to see Jagannath Puri, I want to see Vrindavan, we want to see the different holy places. So just imagine the temptation which must be there for the yogi when you go past, when you go up, out of the material world and you pass through all of the different planets, the higher planets, and they're much, much more opulent. You know, we may think, you know, Australia is maybe a little more opulent than Malaysia or maybe California is more opulent. Sometimes Hawaii, you know, we used to joke how people like to go to the heavenly planets to do devotional service. You get people come to the Krishna consciousness movement, sometimes they join and then just like in in devotees sometimes they come from Bangladesh and they come to Mayapur and become a devotee in Mayapur. Then after some time they want to go to Mumbai because Mumbai is like the opulent place in India. So when they're in Mumbai 
then they hear about, oh, you can be a Buchari, you can go to America and be a Pujari in the temple in America. And so then they think, oh, yeah, I'm going to America, be Pujari there. And they go to America, and they, maybe they go to New York or Washington. Or, then they hear about Hawaii. Oh, I, I want to go to Hawaii, a big pujari in Hawaii. Because in Hawaii the sun is shining and it's tropical and pleasant all the time. Lots of fruit, many beautiful fragrant flowers. So they think, oh, I, I will enjoy there. So like this, we, we want to, we're always thinking about doing devotional service in the most pleasant situation. But the yogi is not thinking about what's pleasant. He just wants to go to be with Krishna. So the yogi can overcome all of this temptation to go to the other planets and to enjoy there. And he will just simply go back to Godhead. So after describing that very exalted pure yogi, then Sukadeva Goswami gives another example about a yogi who does have some material desires. He does have some attachments. He's not fully pure to just go straight out and go back to Godhead. So what's his position? So it described here in this section, we'll see here, it's mentioned here, gradual liberation, krama mukti, right? Huh? If one desires to attain Brahma Loka or other higher realms in this universe. At the time of giving up the body, one does not give up the mind and senses. He keeps the subtle body. He gives up the gross physical body, but he keeps the subtle body, the mind and the senses. And with the mind and senses, we go to enjoy those planets. So, the Srimad Bhagavatam describes how the yogi will go first of all to this uh, planet which is all fire. And the fire burns up all the material contamination. Just like when you find gold, you will put it into fire to burn up all the impurities. So in the same way the living entity enters into this fire planet and all the impurities are burned up from him. And in this way then he can go on to the higher planets in the universe. He can go to places like the Sishumara planetary system which surrounds the Dhruvaloka. And on his way there he can go to Mahar, he can go to Mahar Loka, which is where Brigo Muni lives, and they have a very long lifetime, many millions of years. So this way the yogi goes to these different places in the universe and he enjoys these different situations. He had that desire, he actually wanted to enjoy, to see these places, to, in, to visit them. And in this way he could go on perfect himself. The temptation for the yogi is the yoga siddhis, to give them yoga powers. Just like some yogis, they can make their body very light, that they can float. Some time back there was the one yogi, the Maharishi, he passed away some many years ago now. But Maharishi, he, his people were teaching levitation, right? <laughs> levitation. So that they were doing a course to tell people how they could levitate, train people, you know, make the body very light, get the yoga powers. 
And on the other hand, there's other yoga cities make the body very heavy. We don't have a problem with that city, right? Body very heavy. To get up sometimes heavy. So these are different yoga cities, a pra prapti city. You can acquire something from far away. Prabhupada said he met a yogi. The yogi asked him, what kind of fruit do you like? And Prabhupada said, oh, I like pomegranate. And the man said, oh, pomegranate. They have nice pomegranates in Kabul. And he put out his hand and then just in a second, a pomegranate, big, beautiful, sweet pomegranate came in his hand. So practice city and Prabhupada said some yogis also, they bathe at one point in the Ganga and they can come up far, far away on the, on the, at some other place. They may bathe at the, at, at the Prayag, at, 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 the, at the place where the Ganges meets the Yamuna, but they may, they go in the water and they will come up at Ganga Saga. Like that, they, or they can come up at Gangotri, way up in the Himalayas. They can just move through the water. They tra transfer themselves to different places. So these kind of things are possible by yoga cities. But this, the yogis mentioned here, they're not attractive. These yoga cities, Prabhupada explains, this is all material desire and it's the desire to dominate over the material world. That because the yogi wants to dominate, he wants to control this material world, so they want that kind of power. It's not spiritual, it's material. But some yogis do it. They can walk on water. Prabhupada said, yeah, walk on water. What is the value? You can pay a, one ringgit and you can get the boat across the water. So what is the value? It's the value is one ringgit. So the devotees of the Lord are not, they are not not ambitious to dominate a false and temporary phenomenon. On the contrary, a devotee wants to be dominated by the supreme predominator, the Lord. A devotee, a desire to serve the Lord, the supreme predominator, is spiritual or transcendental. And one has to attain this purification of the mind and the senses to get admission into the spiritual kingdom. So this is the position for the yogis meditating on the super soul. In Chaitanya Charitamrita you can find the verse uh, that says, Bhukti Mukti Siddhikami Sakale Ashanta. Krishna Bhakti Niskam Sa Esha Shanta. The Bhukti, Mukti and Siddhi, all, they're all material desires. It's all material. You want liberation, you want material enjoyment, you want yoga powers, mystic powers. It is all sense gratification. But, um, Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Sakaliya Krishna Bhakti Nishkam Sa Isha Shanta. Only the devotee is peaceful. He said, These people who have material desires are not peaceful because they want to dominate, they want something. So they, they're not peaceful, never satisfied, always want more. But the devotee, he is peaceful. He has no material desire. Jai So because the devotee has no material desires, 
he is happy, he is satisfied. So here it talks about different kinds of perfection. The yogis coming up to Brahmaloka, going up to the top planets in the universe, they're not all the same. They have different desires. Now there are some yogis who come up to Brahmaloka and they have no desire, they just simply want to go back to Godhead. So Chaitanya Charitamrita said there are three different ways. Vir virtuous people reach Brahma Loka by dint of their pious work and they become masters of various planets. And they're put in charge of one of the higher planets in the universe. You become a king and you rule the planet. And that happened. Chitra Ketu, you can read in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Chitra Ketu, how he was a king. And remember his son died and he was lamenting and then he became a great devotee. And he went on, he went on to become the king of the Vijadara planets. He was ruling a whole planet. And so this happens here. Because of their pious work, they become masters of various planets after the resurrection of Brahma. Those who have worshipped Garbhadakshai Vishnu are liberated with Brahma. So the, the second class are those who worship Garbhadakshai Vishnu, they go with Lord Brahma. When Lord Brahma gives up, when Lord Brahma leaves Brahma Loka and goes to the spiritual world, then they can go with him. And those who are pure devotees of the personality of Godhead, they can push through the covering of the universe and go into the spirit. They don't need to wait for Lord Brahma to end his life. Remember, Lord Brahma has a long life. You have a long wait. If you're going to wait for Lord Brahma to go back to Godhead, it's a long wait. But the devotees, the pure devotee, they can go immediately back to Godhead. So different kinds of perfection are being described. Yeah. And Srimad Bhagavatam then points out here the importance of our own sadhana, our hearing and chanting. When we speak of hearing and chanting, it means that not only should one chant and hear of the holy name of the Lord as Rama, Krishna, systematically the 16 names and then Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. But one should also read and hear the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam in the association of devotees. So, you know, we're not recommending the meditation on the super soul, but what is recommended is hearing and chanting. You want to become pure devotee, this is a, the, the easy process. The, the difficult process is to do this yoga meditation, very difficult. Many tests and many challenges and not possible in this age practically for very, very rare that anybody could succeed in this process in the Kali Yuga. But if you do hearing and chanting, reading and chanting the holy name, then you can get the same success of, as these yogis. They struggle for so many lifetimes, for so many, many, many years and so many risks and failures, but you can practice hearing and chanting and very easily, very quickly, you can get success. So this point is made in the course of this chapter. However, we're warned that there are also 
challenges in our own sadhana, in our own practice, and there are things called unwanted creepers. We often refer to them as anarthas or artha is things we want, things of value, and anartha things which have no value. So these unwanted creepers or anarthas are mentioned here from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Some unnecessary creepers growing with the bhakti creeper are the creepers of behavior unacceptable for those trying to attain perfection. Please understand that in the practice of hearing and chanting, we are going to water the plant of devotion. And as we water the plant, the bhakti lata, we are going to cause others' weeds to grow. It's expected that weeds will also grow. And we have to be able to identify the weeds and remove them. The weeds are the same, the unwanted creepers or anarthas. We have to remove them, we have to recognize what is of no value, what is not helping our devotional service. And we have to remove these things from the heart. So, first thing mentioned are this uh, behavior, unacceptable behavior for those trying to attain perfection. Unacceptable behavior means sometimes diplomatic behavior, things like that, acting superficially, not genuinely. So we want to be very careful about behavior. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Sanatana Goswami about Vaishnava etiquette and it's been described by Sanatana Goswami in Hari Bhakti Vilas. You can read there, Sanatana Goswami received the instruction from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he wrote about it in Hari Bhakti Vilas. And Prabhupada has mentioned in several places about Hari Bhakti Vilas and there are references also there in Chaitanya Charitamrita as well as in Srimad Bhagavatam, other books. So, unacceptable behavior. Another, we, we should behave. Ha, Prabhupada was on television show in America and the interviewer asked Srila Prabhupada, how would we recognize a devotee of Lord Krishna and Prabhupada said, oh, they will be a perfect gentleman. So, this way, if, 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 the behave, if we act in a manner which is not acceptable, then it's not, if we behave in an ungentlemanly manner, it's not proper. We have to behave very nicely. I was reading one book by, the, you know that famous brahmachari from Pune, or is it Champati Gorbopal? Yeah, so I was reading one of his books and he described a nice story. I thought it's very nice of the ideal behavior of a devotee. He was telling how uh, they did a Rathi Atra in Mumbai and they did it in a very posh area, you know, wealthy people were there. But somehow, when they were maneuvering the Rathiatra chariot, it bumped into somebody's Mercedes Benz. You know? Bumped into somebody's Mercedes Benz. You know? Oh God, could you imagine? In India especially, you know, you to have a Mercedes Benz. So they bumped the car, you know, and put a bump in it. Oh no, what? What are we going to do? So anyway, the, you know, the ordinary devotees, they didn't worry about it too much. They went on with the festival. But 
it happened that after the festival, the man who owned the car, actually this man who owned the car, he had given a donation for the Rathiatra festival. He'd given a donation, but after the car got bumped, and he came, he came, he said, he said, you know, next time you have Rathiatra, I want to pay for the whole thing. He said, I'll give all the money for the Rathiatra, I'll pay for the whole thing. And the devotees were like, what? Really? You know, they were like astonished, it was amazing. And, and they said, why? And he said, well, look, he pulled out a piece of paper. He said, you know, somebody put this piece of paper on my, the windscreen of my car. And they had written on, on the piece of paper, they had written, Dear sir, I'm sorry, but you know, somehow we've hit your car and we've created some damage, you know. It, it's the, the, and it's, I've been waiting here for one hour for you to come and nobody's come. Anyway, here's my contact number. Please contact me and we want to make all arrangements to have your car repaired. And they said, we take it as our full duty and responsibility to get your car repaired. And so the man said, you know, he said, I'm so impressed that you people would be so honest and so straightforward in your dealings. He said, I feel this is the essence of spiritual dealings. This is ideal spirituality. He said, so next time you have Rathi Atra, I'll pay for the whole thing. So it shows, you know, that honesty pays. To be honest, it pays. And that's a, an example of behavior. You know, that we should be like that. We should be straightforward. You know, it, it's quite an interesting story, isn't it? You know, to, to hear like that, the devotees would do this. But... That's how this kind of standard which we should have here. And that impresses people. You know, we may not like it, but that's what impresses people. And it really pays. So proper behavior, right? And then the next point is mentioned, uh, kudinati, right? Oh, it's, well, trying to diplomatic behavior. Um, the, first of all, the creepers of, be, of behavior unacceptable for those trying to attain perfection. Diplomatic behavior and then animal killing, jiva himsa. And then love puja pratishta. Love puja pratishta, prophet adoration and distinction or is described here as mundane profiteering, mundane adoration and mundane Im what is it? importance, mundane importance, yeah. So lab, puja and pratishta, we often hear about these things. Prabhupada would translate it often as prophet, adoration and distinction. Here it's mentioned as prophet, adoration and importance. Same thing. So from Chaitanya Charitamrita, these are, you know, these are things which are identified as the unwanted creepers. Often in material life we hanker for these things. You work in the corporate world, you want recognition, you want distinction. We long for that kind of thing in the material world. But it's another weed. It's, it's something which is obstructing our devotion to Krishna. And we have to really guard against it and not allow ourselves to be influenced by these things. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tells us, think of ourselves lower than the straw in the street. 
Amane namane din. Offer all respects to others. These things. But human nature is the opposite. Human nature means conditioned nature. Not our pure nature, but our conditioned nature is to one these things. So we're warned against them. So just finishing off this chapter. Um, by my personal desire, I bring my unalloyed devotee to my supreme abode, placing them on the shoulders of Garuda. They return without having to undergo the path of light. In other words, they don't have to go to that planet to purify themselves first before they can go up to higher planets because they're already completely devoted to the Lord. The unalloyed devotee, unalloyed devotee, he doesn't need any purification. So he doesn't need to go to that planet of the light, of fire, to be pure because he's already pure. Srila Prabhupada explains about the direct path of bhakti. There are many indirect methods for deliverance from the clutches of material existence, but none of them is as easy and, as, and auspicious as bhakti yoga. The means of jnana and yoga and other all, all unalloyed disciplines are not independent in delivering a performer. Such activities help one to reach the stage of bhakti yoga after many, many years. So after many, many years of doing jnana yoga and other yogas, you come to bhakti yoga and Bhagavad Gita Krishna said, Bahunam Gyanmanamanti Gyanavam Mam. So after many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge surrenders to me. Such a soul is very rare. So the, the culmination of knowledge is bhakti yoga. And similarly the culmination of the other yoga processes whether it's karma yoga or hatha yoga or kundalini yoga, whatever you're doing, it's all going to come to bhakti. Astanga yoga also comes to bhakti. The yoga ladder is there. As already explained in the text of Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, either direct bhakti yoga or the, are the means which ultimately, which ultimately culminate in bhakti yoga without any tinge of fruitive activities constitute the highest form of religion. Everything else is simply a waste of time for the performer. Srila Sridhar Swami and all other Acharyas like Jiva Goswami agree that Bhakti Yoga is not only simple, natural and free from trouble but is the only source of happiness for the human being. Very important statements here, the only source of happiness for the human being. Our real happiness comes in bhakti yoga, in chanting the holy name and in doing service for Krishna. So we have to meditate on these kind of statements of Srila Prabhupada. They're very important, very deep, very meaningful for all of us. We crave happiness, 
but we do not know, we often forget what is real happiness. So, actually, this, this is happiness, hearing and chanting, talking about Krishna. All right, are there any questions? Anyone? Yes, Prabhu? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, it's, I just wanted to check, um, is there Krishna consciousness in the higher planets? And uh, is it better to, to practice Krishna consciousness in earth rather than in the higher planets? Yes, there is Krishna consciousness in the higher planets, but they have their own material desires. The, the demigods all have material desires. The demigods are not pure devotees. They're elevated, they're certainly on a big position, they have a lot of pious like punya, piety to them, but they're not pure devotees. So there is devotional service there, but it's tainted with the mode of goodness. And there's different kinds of devotional service. Often the heavenly planets, for example, the heavenly planets, they will recite the Vedic hymns and they will enjoy somaras. So that's more the nature of the heavenly planets. But above the higher, above the, above the heavenly planets, you have places like Tapaloka where people are engaged in meditation. The four Kumaras are there and they do meditation. They, they consider meditation to be better than active service. And there's a, a discussion on that. If you read the Brihad Bhagavat Amrita, you can read about how Gopkumar the cowherd boy from Govardhan goes to these different places and in each place he will discuss the merits of the different activities which they're doing in the different places. Just like in the heavenly planets, often they will do yagya, they're offering fact sacrifices. And in Satyaloka you have the Purusha, the Lord is there in his Purusha form and he's got a thousand arms and he's actually receiving the different offerings which they're offering to him. And so they're doing these different activities like that. But they have their own attachments, just like the demigods are attached to having position, to having recognition, being uh, important in the universe. So these are some of the problems for the people in the higher planets. But on this planet, it's considered this is the best place to be Krishna conscious because this is in the middle of the universe. If you go higher up the universe, there's more sense gratification. But this planet Earth is in the middle of the universe, so the, the sense gratification is not extreme and the hell is also not very extreme compared to the lower regions of the universe. And also on this planet we have the Govardhan Hill and the Yamuna River and different places like this, replicas, replicas of Vrindavan and so on. So these places are also very special which make it very helpful for people who want to cultivate devotional service. And so that's why the Lord comes here and he spoke the Bhagavad Gita here and, he, and Lord Chaitanya also came propagated the chanting of the holy name. 
So all of these things make this earth planet a very convenient place for people to become Krishna conscious. If we think it's hard to be a devotee here, it's much harder to be a devotee in the higher planets. And it's also much harder in the lower planets. So we're in the best place. We're very fortunate to be here. It's an opportunity because also we had Lord Chaitanya appear just 500 years ago. So we have that legacy that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, he established the Sankirtan movement and he taught also Krishna Bhakti in the perfect level. So many different benefits were given to this planet Earth and we should take advantage. When you become Krishna conscious, you can go straight back to God. They said the demigods, they want to take birth here. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, today I met one um, gentleman, a Buddhist, who um, had a nice talk with him about the spirituality. But um, he, of course, is convinced that after enlightenment, um, you know, at the end his goal is. It had a kind of a Brahman realization, you know. He gave me the example, like a drop in, in falls into the ocean, you know, and, you know, that, that's it, you know, like a... And I noticed many people in the world have this confusion, uh, on, or how to say, or this goals only to realize this aspect of the Lord of Brahman. What could be a good explanation or, or convincing explanation for for a Buddhist you know, who have this mentality and do not know the goal of life to be a person, you know, like a personality of God that matters, if you have any recommendation. Yeah, usually, you know, people talk about the water merging in, or the rivers flow into the sea and become one with the sea or the drop merges into the ocean. And so we see that's not a very good example to compare the drop and the, the, the drop of water in the ocean. That, that's not, not a good example to compare the, the Lord and the living entity. Because they're not con they're not conscious things. The drop of water in the ocean are not conscious, but the the Lord and the living entity they're both conscious. And so we give the example. We say that within the rivers there are fish, and the fish go into the river. They f f they swim into the sea and they keep their individuality. They don't give up their individuality, they maintain their individuality. They don't become nothing, they keep their individuality. So within the ocean there are so many living entities, they come from the rivers and they keep their individuality. So we say, that's a better example, rather than losing our individuality. Hmm. Thank you, Shana Gurmaraj, please accept my humble obeisances on the relationship with the Prophet. Gurmaraj, I wanted to ask, are there any practical steps for us to apply to introspect on the development of the anarthas in the course of discharging our devotional service? Because many of the time, many times we will not realize that these anarthas are coming up. So are there any like, you know, uh, ways for us to identify or introspect or carefully guard against this like, practically? Well, we can understand a lot by how we're developing taste for the holy name and for devotional service. The more we're eager for devotional service and for chanting the holy name, then that's a good sign that we're guarding against anartas. 
we want to become very conscious about our whole attitude towards devotional service. And we want to regularly check on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can check how many, how many times we miss the Mongol RT, how many days we get up and we don't get up when we oversleep, how many days we didn't finish our rounds, or I hope, you know, I hope you don't, I hope you manage to finish your rounds, but it may happen, some days you don't finish your rounds, so how, how often does that happen? And similarly, other things like eating, things which we're not supposed to eat, something maybe not offered to Krishna and you eat it. And different material desires, you know, our, our ambitions and this, this I mentioned that profit and profit are we want profit, you know, we, we like to get more money, more more have a bigger house, a newer car, and, you know, we always want, we, we like this profit and then adoration, yeah, people will respect me more, and distinction. Uh, I was telling one girl, one young lady, she was doing exams, you know, she didn't get a lot of A's, you know, she got several B's. And I said, it's okay, you know, I said, don't worry about it. I said, if you have to get a lot of A's, you're always on pressure to do better, you know, to keep up your performance, you know, and you have to keep performing. That puts a stress on you, you know, to keep up, to do more. Just like, you know, yourself, you know, you got your PhD, but that doesn't stop there, you know, you got to go on, you got to publish more and do more research. And it goes on and never ends, you know. Who was it? I think it was, was it uh, Pythagoras? He did all his, uh, who did his mathematics when he was about 18, after that he didn't do any more. <laughs> he, did all stuff. he just did it when he was very young. And, so, don't get too attached to all these material things, you know. You can get very caught up in the whole material world and goes on and on. We have to be able to somehow sit back and let go and just take shelter of the holy name of Krishna. But sometimes, you know, just for the sake of maintaining your job, you may say, oh yeah, we all, yeah, I gotta do it, you know. <laughs> you know. One man told me in the company, he would always do like that. He said, whenever they have a meet, yes, we gotta do it, we're gonna, we're gonna kill the market, we're really gonna control the market. And he's thinking, in his mind, he said, I'm thinking, oh, just let me get out of here, <laughs> you know, let me go home. <laughs> but you, you're with all these materialistic people, you got to put on a, a bit of a show and be in that mood. So you have to be careful, you don't get too much caught up in the whole thing. Just try to keep calm and depend on Krishna. Yeah, we, we do want to check. We do want to check how we're doing. You thought people have sat in a report, so do their sat in a report and make a note what time, how many rounds they chanted before Mangalarti, or what time they finished their japa by, and, you know, how much reading they did in the day, and these kind of things. And sometimes it, it's, it helps us to let us know how much we're focused and how much we're caught up with all the material things which is all keeping us entangled, keeping us locked down, stopping us from getting the real taste for the name and for service to Krishna. So we have to watch for the it's a great challenge.
Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. On behalf of the Temple Management Council, I'd like to thank Maharaj for the wonderful class. It's only known as Bhakti Vikta Vinayana Narasimha Maharaj Ki. Now we'll be serving uh, some prasadam and also Maharaj is a traveling preacher, he travels all over the world. Anyone who wants to give Dakshana is always welcome. And tomorrow Maharaj will be leaving to Bangkok. So take your opportunity, come and take your darshan. Hare Krishna. <laughs>